Hey, what's your chambers and welcome back to my channel. So in today's topic, we will discover and unveil the truth about lighting in stream breeding, where we will break down the myth and uncover the truth about stream breeding. Today, we will be tackling one of the biggest misconceptions in the hobby, lightings. For years, we have been told that intense lighting is crucial for enhancing stream coloration, improving breeding success and keeping our streams healthy. But what if I told you that everything you thought you knew about lighting was actually wrong? Scientific research conducted in collaboration with esteemed institutions has revealed that prolonged exposure to bright lighting doesn't enhance stream coloration. In fact, it does the opposite. So why is this myth still being pushed? Well, stick around, because we are about to expose the commercial gimmicks behind it and what really matters when it comes to stream care. Let's dive in. One of the most persistent myths in stream breeding suggests that more light equates to more vibrant stream. Our controlled studies spanning multiple tanks environment have demonstrated that prolonged exposure to intense lighting does not enhance coloration. In fact, the opposite holds true. Excessive light exposure leads to color degradation over time. This phenomenon is rooted in stream cycle physiology where stress induced by intense illumination disrupt their natural pigmentation processes. Causing a gradual fading of their vibrant hues, you can see from the data gathered from a 10-week study on caridina stream and how light impacts color pigmentation. The impact of excessive light is linked to several biological factors. Number one, stress-induced color fading. Streams that are subjected to prolonged bright lighting exhibit signs of stress, such as erratic movement and reduced feeding activity. Stress inhibits the production of chromosomes, the pigments that contain cells responsible for their coloration. Number two, disruption of natural cycle. In nature, streams experience natural variation in light exposure. Overexposure to artificial light disturbs their circadian rhythm leading to metabolic imbalances. Number three, increase energy expenditure. Instead of utilizing you know, energy for growth and reproduction, stress stream allocate resources towards survival, weakening their immune system and diminishing their natural vibrancy. So why then has lighting remained a cornerstone of stream keeping advice if the scientific evidence contradicts its supposed benefit? The answer, unfortunately, lies in commercial manipulation rather than genuine husbandry principles. The widespread belief in the necessity of intense lighting has not evolved organically, rather it has been perpetuated by commercial interests looking to drive sales of unnecessary additives, particularly bacteria powder. Many sellers promote the idea that bright lighting encourages the development of green wall in aquarium, which are then supposedly enhanced by bacteria powder to improve stream health and breeding success. However, extensive studies and real-world observations from experts breeders have confirmed that bacteria powder offer no significant advantage in stream husbandry. This marketing strategy has trapped countless hobbies in an endless cycle of purchasing costly products under the illusion of improved breeding outcomes. The only tangible result is an increase in your monthly electrical bills and unnecessary maintenance effort. When I first entered the world of stream breeding, I was astounded by the stark contrast between the information I was given and the knowledge I had previously acquired from breeding fishes. The stream hobby was filled with best practices that seems to contradict logic and in many cases lack any scientific backing. The fish industry itself has long plagued by myth and misleading claims designed to upsell unnecessary products and I quickly realized that the stream industry was no different. The idea that high intensity lighting was essential for stream success was just another example of misinformation passed down through generations without question. It became clear to me that many hobbies were trapped in a cycle of trial and error spending money on ineffective solutions while unknowingly making their stream's environment more stressful. As I sought out experienced breeders and traveled to different countries, I learned that the most successful stream keepers operated under completely different principles, principles based on observation, patience, and deep understanding of stream biology 
rather than commercial trends. Our research was not limited to laboratory environments. So over the years, we have traveled across Taiwan, Vietnam, the US, and multiple regions in Europe, collectively observing over thousands of breeding tanks and hundreds of thousands of streams maintained by some of the world's most successful stream breeders. The findings were unequivocal. None of these expert breeders relied on high-intensity lighting or bacterial powder. Instead, their success stemmed from meticulous water quality management, optimal feeding practices, and selective breeding techniques. So here are three key observations we found. Number one, water quality is paramount. Breeders prioritize stability in water parameters such as pH, temperature, GH, and TDS, rather than focusing on lighting intensity. Number two, low to moderate light is preferred. Stream thrive in tanks with subdued lighting that mimics their natural environment, reducing stress and promoting natural coloration. Number three, biofilm and natural food sources develop naturally the presence of this biofilm, which is a crucial, crucial food source for streams. It's not reliant on bright lighting or bacteria powder. So what is the true role of lighting in stream tanks then? Although lighting is not a determinant of stream coloration or breeding success, it does serve a function, purpose in an aquarium setting. Number one, aquatic plant growth. In planted tanks or in planted stream tanks, proper lighting is essential to support photosynthesis. However, plant species may vary and their requirements will be different. And excessive lighting can lead to an overgrowth of LG rather than plant health improvements. Number two, observation and monitoring. A well-lit tank allows hobbies to better observe their stream, detect potential health concerns, concerns and assess molting condition. Number three, establishing a natural day and night cycle. Maintaining a consistent photo periods aid in regulating stream behavior, though this can be achieved with moderate lighting rather than extreme brightness. So one of the most misleading marketing strategies in the stream industry is the alleged synergy between bacteria powder and intense lighting. Sellers claim that bacteria additives work in tandem with bright lights to cultivate biofilm, an essential food source for stream. However, scientific analysts, analysis have breeder and breeder testimonies confirm that there are three things. Number one, biofilm naturally develops. Given time, a well-established tank will generate sufficient biofilm without lights. Number two, intense lighting is not required. Leading stream breeders maintain healthy colonies under moderate to low light condition with no need for excessive brightness. And number three, bacteria powders are often redundant. The beneficial bacteria required for a balanced ecosystem are already present in filter media and sponges, rendering most additive unnecessary. So the ornamental stream hobby is filled with traditions that have been passed down without scientific scrutiny. Many of these practices, while well intended, are rooted in misconceptions rather than empirical evidence. Hobbies must move beyond outdated advice and approach stream care with a mindset grounded in research and real-world observations. Here's how breeders can refine their approach and avoid pitfalls of information. Number one, use lighting tailored to your specific tank needs. So if you keep plants, for example, invest in lighting appropriate for their growth rather than assuming its benefit stream coloration. Prioritize stable water conditions. Instead of chasing ineffective additives, focus on maintaining consistent water parameters, which has far greater impact on stream health and breeding success. And lastly, trust the natural ecosystem because biofilm forms organically over time, serving as a crucial food source for streams. While streams strip away biofilm water feed, adding calyx ball will help enhance the growth and supplement of the biofilm. So we are at a turning point in the stream keeping hobby. The time has come to break free from outdated traditions and embrace a science driven approach that prioritizes the well-being of our streams over profit driven marketing. The evidence is clear. Lighting intensity has no bearing on stream coloration or breeding success. Yet the industry continues to perpetuate this myth trapping hobbies in an unnecessary cycle of purchasing and adjusting their tanks based on information, based on misinformation. 
So it's time to shift the focus to what truly matters, water quality, stability, and responsible husbandry. If this research and experience have helped you see stream care in a new light, consider supporting this movement for truth in the hobby. Share this knowledge, challenge misinformation, and foster a community built on trust and transparency. If you found this video valuable, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Let's build a thriving stream keeping community together, one based on facts, not myth. Drop your thoughts in the comments and let's continue this conversation. See you in the next one and until next time, peace out.